National 9 News, this is Nightline with Hugh Remington. 40 years for the ringleader of a gang rape. Government buildings destroyed after a death in custody. And Justin Langer leads Australia's assault in the Adelaide Test. The ringleader in the gang rape of a 16-year-old girl is tonight beginning a 40-year stretch in jail. 32-year-old John Hill and three other men broke into the teenager's Sydney home midway through last year. They tied up her parents and repeatedly raped the girl, leaving horrific injuries. Even police say this case will haunt them forever. A very brutal attack, uh, very violent and a matter that one would not forget in one's lifetime. And 14 months on, the victim remains so traumatised she couldn't bear to face the ringleader in court today as he was sentenced. Police say the attack by Duncan Hill, an Aborigine, was racially motivated, targeting wealthy Asians. It's as if it happened yesterday. Uh, they're still very, very traumatised by what's going on. The 32-year-old led the attack, the group of four robbing a first-floor unit in Newington. They tied up the unit's owners, then turned on the 16-year-old daughter. Over two hours, she was repeatedly raped by three of the four men, her injuries so serious they required emergency surgery. Michael Fernane, the same judge who delivered a 55-year jail term to notorious rapist Bill Al Scaff, said in my 35 years in the legal profession, I have not ever seen a rape victim with injuries which were so severe. He said despite a troubled past riddled with jail time and drug abuse, Hill showed no remorse or compassion. In my opinion, he is a cold, callous, vicious and extremely dangerous criminal. At one stage of the sentencing, Hill, clearly agitated, turned to the public gallery and threw a glass of water over members of the police force and the media, telling them to stop staring at him. He'll be eligible for parole when he's 62. Helen Kapalos for Nightline. Rugby league player David Peachy could still face charges over a brawl in Sydney's King's Cross last night which left four police officers injured. Earlier in the night, Peachy had attended a charity function. Arrested just after midnight, David Peachy denies he went from fundraiser to hellraiser in the space of just two hours. He'd been hosting a celebrity started launch of a Christmas CD produced for the Peachy Foundation to help disadvantaged Aboriginal children. Later, the Shark star found himself in the middle of a brawl outside the Empire Hotel in King's Cross. It's disappointing that, uh, that, that, that there's been a negative turn to, to what should have been a very positive night. The Cronulla playmaker claims he was playing the role of peacemaker. Oh, just some family members had, a, had an altercation and I was there as, um, as one of the family members to try and break it up. At one stage, Darlinghurst Road was closed after four police were injured. Uh, one was taken to St Vincent's Hospital uh, to have uh, some cuts treated and uh, the others were just bruising and general scratches. Well, I was there with my mother and um, it happened so that she ended up on the ground and I was there protecting her and, and the police um, misunderstood what was happening. By the time all those arrested were questioned, three were charged, two men and a woman. They'll appear in the Downing Centre Court next month, accused of violent disorder and assaulting police. Police have confirmed the charged woman was Peachy's mother. She was uh, resisting police in the execution of their duty. And charges against the footballer have not been ruled out as police continue to examine security camera footage. If it discloses that he or any other persons have committed offences, uh, then they'll be pl placed before the courts accordingly. Adam Walters reporting for Nightline. Police reinforcements are tonight trying to restore calm to the North Queensland community of Palm Island after locals burned the police station, post office and courthouse to the ground. The violence was prompted by a finding that the death of an Aboriginal man in custody at the weekend was an accident. Smoke rises from the law and order quarter of the pretty but troubled island due north of Townsville. Petrol bombs were hurled at the police station early this afternoon, burning it to the ground. Protesters also turned on a residential police barracks and the magistrate's court, and they built a makeshift roadblock on the airport's runway, closing the facility. Tensions have been high since 36-year-old father of two, Cameron Dumaji, was arrested last Friday for drunkenness, dying later in police custody. A witness claimed he saw a senior police officer bash the man. He went down on him, he started punching him. You, you had enough, Mr Dumaji? You want, you want more? 
The senior officer and an Aboriginal liaison officer were removed and reinforcements brought in. Then on Wednesday, the first serious signs of trouble with the police and their station attacked. The Crime and Misconduct Commission took charge of the investigation. Today, residents learned Mr Dumaji's death was put down to an accident. There was a scuffle and the police officer and the person who has died then fell to the ground on some concrete steps. And it is my understanding that the injuries sustained by the deceased person were entirely consistent with that version of events. Mr Dumaji had four broken ribs which ruptured his liver. The 20-odd police on the island are now holed up in the hospital. They'll soon be joined by fellow officers from Townsville and emergency response team members from Cairns and Brisbane. Melissa Downs for Nightline. Opposition leader Mark Latham has tonight refused to rule out sacking Labor's Deputy Senate Leader Stephen Conroy, complaining of continuing party room leaks. Mr Latham reportedly had a heated conversation with Senator Conroy at the weekend, allegedly claiming the front bencher was conducting a jihad against him that couldn't go unpunished. The Labor leader would need caucus support to demote the Victorian Senator. That could happen as early as next week. Mr Latham has again denied his job is under threat, despite speculation of a leadership spill before Christmas. An end-of-season trip to Bali has ended in tragedy. 23-year-old Alan Henderson from Perth died after two jet skis collided just off the holiday resorts of Nusa Dua. The rider of the other jet ski, his soccer teammate Michael Setkoff, was questioned by police but then released. No one's really old enough to know in this shop accident. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know how to live without him. The fathers of both men are in Bali and convinced police there was nothing more to it than a tragic accident. An embarrassing lapse for Victoria's Department of Human Services. Two children in care have been found wandering in Melbourne's Crown Casino complex in the early hours of the morning. The 10 and 12 year old boys were stopped by Crown staff at 2 o'clock this morning. Outside this music shop and metres from the entrance to the gaming floor. They were approached by Crown security and uh, reluctantly they sort of gave up some information after a little while and said that they were under the care of the Department of Human Services and they came from Mount Evelyn. Security staff called a government emergency line and were allegedly told just to put the children in a taxi. Crown refused and called the police to escort them home. An angry uh, Premier has demanded answers. It deserves a complete and thorough report from the Department of Human Services, which I understand the Minister has sought. It's not good enough. I'm very concerned about what's happened. Uh, it should not have happened. I want to know every detail about it and uh, then I'll be take some, taking action. It is still not clear how the pair made the one-hour journey from Mount Evelyn to Crown and the opposition is outraged at the apparent lack of supervision that allowed them to wander so far from home. We've seen a 13-year-old girl in care become pregnant. We've seen another 13-year-old girl go missing and finish up dying in a tragic accident. The child protection system is truly in crisis. The person looking after the boys realised they were missing at 9pm and alerted the police. The department says they do not have the power to lock up those in their care. Mia Greaves for Nightline. A New South Wales court has reserved its decision in an appeal from Kathleen Folbig, the mother jailed for killing her four children. Her lawyers say the conviction and her 40-year jail term should be overturned. Many key players were at court for the hearing. Kathleen Folbig's ex-husband Craig, the investigating policeman Bernie Ryan, even Salvation Army chaplain Joyce Harmer, who still stays in touch with the convicted murderer. Yes, I do. I have regular contact with Everyone, it seemed, but Kathleen Folbig herself. She stayed in her jail cell, where she's serving a 40-year sentence for killing her four children, Caleb, Patrick, Sarah and Laura. The 37-year-old maintains her innocence. Her lawyers arguing her conviction should be overturned because she should have faced separate trials for each of the murder charges, not one joint trial. They also claim the medical evidence was prejudicial. As for her sentence, if one stands back and looks, a term of 40 years for a profoundly disturbed woman who killed her four children is extraordinary. Prosecutors, though, argue the conviction should stand and that a life term could have been supported. So Kathleen Folbig's fate now lies in the hands of three appeal court judges. They've reserved their decision, leaving another chapter in this case still to be written. Nina Stevens reporting for Nightline.
Two European backpackers have faced a Brisbane court for desecrating the city's Anzac Memorial. The two men, a 22-year-old German and his 21-year-old Polish friend, were caught wearing military fatigues while burning books in the eternal flame. The court heard they extinguished the flame before taking photographs of each other. The magistrate fined them $700 each, calling their behaviour a disgrace. Asbestos victims are now furious at the Prime Minister. Mr Howard has angered thousands of sufferers by ruling out retrospective laws to force the company James Hardy to boost its compensation provisions. Asbestos sufferers and their supporters at the monument which honours all workers killed in industrial accidents. But these people believe the killer illness was no accident. James Hardy guilty of concealing the dangers. More than 56,000 Australians are believed to have the disease, thousands already dead. But the Victims' Compensation Fund is now so short of money, it's planning to go into provisional liquidation. Retrospective laws, straight away, undo, undo what Hardy's has put together. But although the Prime Minister agrees the situation is obscene, he says there's nothing the federal government can do to rush the issue. You can't just have uh, people arbitrarily deciding things without the law being properly applied. He's shouldering the responsibility of these immoral companies and I find that abhorrent. There is a lot this government can do. It can, for number one, support a boycott on James Hardy's products until they come to uh, the plate and resolve this issue. And the Prime Minister says that'll be as soon as possible. He's pledged maximum federal government support to the agencies investigating the way in which James Hardy moved its operations beyond the reach of Australian law and whether that can be overturned. Peter Harvey for Nightline. Overseas now and in the Ukraine, people power appears to have won at least for the time being after a week of massive rallies in support of opposition leader Viktor Yushchenko. The country's Supreme Court has agreed to suspend proclamation of the presidential election result while it investigates claims the poll was rigged. People power in all its strength. Hundreds of thousands of protesters who refused to leave Kiev's main square until democracy wins. It's minus 13 and they're living in tents, but they say their country's future is at stake. We want to uh, show all the world and uh, show our government that we are going to protect our world. On the world stage, Britain has now joined the United States in rejecting Ukraine's election results. And the popular opposition leader, Viktor Yushchenko, who most think should now be president, formally lodged an appeal in his country's Supreme Court.